In this code of quick, I'm going to explain why you might want to do PCA, which is a dimensionality reduction technique, what that means, and how to actually do it in scikit-learn with Python very easily. The point of any dimensionality reduction is to go from a high number of dimensions to a low number of dimensions. So for each of these 60,000 images, we have 784 dimensions in each of them, and maybe we actually don't need all 784 to represent the picture. Of course, we'd be tossing information and would be giving some of it up, but although we lose some information, if we go down to say 5, 12, or 24 dimensions, it's going to be a lot faster to process and easier for a neural network, for example, to understand. To do PCA, we need scikit-learn, and we're going to do from sklearn import decomposition, and then after that, we can simply write PCA is equal to decomposition.pca in capitals. To specify the number of dimensions we want to convert to, say go down to 2 or 4 dimensions, we just do pca.nComponents is equal to whatever number and so we'll change this into 2. That way we can actually graph the information and see where they separate. We need to fit the PCA model, and to do that we're going to do PCA data is equal to PCA.fitTransform, and then we have to pass it a, a NumPy array where we have the number of examples by the number of dimensions it is. So for this example, we could pass this, there are 60,000 by 784, where we have 60,000 training examples, and we have 784 dimensions for each of those. Train X, I can show the result of that. As we can see, PCA data has several rows. It'll actually have 60,000 of them, and we will have two columns because we specified we want two components. So these are two very strong, important components in distinguishing an image. Using this plotly code, we get this graph of the data, but it doesn't mean much unless we cover the data points what label or handwritten digit they actually are. Now that we've covered the graph, we can see very obvious groups or clusters of the information. And so over here, the purples, these are all the one digits, the pinks, these are all the seven digits, and so on. And if you're following along, all I did is add color equals train y, which is the labels. This was an interesting exercise, except how we often use PCA is in the classification loop of an ML algorithm, and I'll show this very quickly below. I'll make a very simple k-nearest neighbors classifier, and if you're not familiar with the algorithm, that's okay. The point is that we're trying to predict, given our data up here, our 60,000 by 784 training examples, these are our training labels, and we're trying to see how well a classifier can predict on this test set of information with this test input and this test output. To make a very simple classifier, we'll simply let k and classifier be an instantiation of this class right here and give these parameters, but this isn't too important. We're going to train the classifier on the PCA fit data, and so we'll do k and classifier dot fit with the PCA data from above, and then the same labels, which is going to be train y. That's the same we used for the colors. After that, we want to see how well our model did, and so we'll do knnclassifier.score, and that'll be, of course, on the test information, except we need to apply the transform to the test information as well, at least the test input, and so we'll do pca.transform, call that on the test x array, and then the normal test y array, and then we'll see our score. We see our accuracy is only 40%, and so clearly we need more information. Just two of these pieces of data are not enough. Above, we can copy all of our information we used for fitting the PCA transform. We can put it down here, and then specify a new number for the end components. Let's try changing that to 10. We get an accuracy of 92%, which is still very good given that we're no longer comparing 784 dimensions, we're only comparing 10, so it's going to be a lot faster to process. Down below I link the documentation for PCA and scikit-learn, and I also have the code available and a link down below. Subscribe for more!